Hey everybody, uh, this is the reality of any video by, I reckon, by Big Clive or Ave, your workbench is in a bit of a mess, so one second. Oh look at my lovely neat and tidy desk. Yeah, seriously, all YouTubers, this is what's going to be going on outside of the frame. <laughs> Okay, so what the hell is this video all about, and why have you got an ammo can? I'll get to that in a minute. Ugh. First things first, uh, you remember I did a video talking about resin castings, and I said I got them almost perfect, but I was getting these marks in the surface. Well, as I think, I haven't actually tested this yet, but I'm pretty sure from what the few people that sounded like they knew what they were talking about said, it was actually too much hardener, making it get too hot. And I was doing this when I was casting some of these during that like, you know, 28, 29, 30 degree weather. So, heat, definitely. I think that's the problem. So then I thought, well, let's just try sanding and polishing this stuff to see how difficult it is. And to my joy, this is nice stuff to work with. Um, as you can see, this one is now finished. Perfect on all sides. Nice rounded bottom, clear all the way through. Looks like a nicely made paperweight. Now the surface isn't quite perfect on this yet. Um, when I was trying this yesterday, I was using some 240 grit, and then I had nothing else to get me between 240 and 1000. So I've been out and bought some more wet and dry and stuff today, so I can actually go back over these again up to 2000, and then polish them, and then uh, yeah, they, they look pretty cool. I did notice on a couple of them that the thing that's actually inside was very close to the edge and then I realised it actually sanded through it and I thought that's a problem but actually you can't feel them really but can you see how in the light there's little pieces just show through and they're actually the thing inside it's only on a couple of sides um, obviously in the future I'll try and embed them deeper than that but I actually kind of like the way that it's like that I mean uh, this little cube, for instance, uh, ignore the fact it's not filled to the bottom, it was supposed to sit like this. If you notice, yeah, you see how like you get like a, a pattern of ones that have actually come through and been sanded. You'd think you wouldn't want that, but it actually looks really cool. And if you look at the clarity of one that hasn't been touched, compared to this one, I can't tell a difference. I mean, this is a bit darker because there's more stuff in there, but yeah, it's good. I'm really pleased about that. So thank you for the people who gave me the advice. Hopefully I'll get most of that solved in the next casting um, by not using so much hardener. But why, you say? Well, obviously I want to make these to sell them, and I also want to do some different ones. So I'm now thinking, right, I've got the, the technique down. What can I put in there? And this is the thing that I kind of had planned from the beginning. And some people might know about this. I have an inert ammunition collection. And I have been asked before now, hey, could you go through that and show us what, all the different ones that you have? And I'm like, man, that's going to be a long video. So this is why I'm filming it this way. So my next step is I'm going to be testing, doing this casting using inert ammunition rounds that will then be embedded in, you know, in here. It will look super cool, people will love them, it's completely legal for me to sell them because they're inert cartridges um, and, and I don't need a license or anything like that to buy them, sell them or do anything. So, now this is where the videos are going to get longer. I'm going to go through this and basically say everything I know about every different round. Not everything I know, just kind of what they are and what they're from. If you're not interested in that, there's nothing more to see in this video than me going through an entire box through a different ammunition. And by the way, it isn't just big things. There's... It's all... Oh, Christ. It's all loose underneath here. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot. So if that's not interesting to you, just leave me a like and carry on. Maybe a sub if, if you're new to my channel. If you're like me and you're just interested by stuff like this, um, I'm now going to go through this and talk about things and it's going to be a long ass video. Enjoy! Probably get some alcohol if I was you because, my god, it'll make it more entertaining. Right, now that they're gone, hello, you three. <laughs> I'm just going to go through this. Okay, so that is a clip from an M1 Garand. Um, so they are, so they're 308. In the M1 Garand clip, I have learnt how to stack those. 
this thing, 30 millimeter uh, cannon bullet from something like a Harrier jump jet that has a machine gun, this is the sort of thing that it fires. Like a machine gun, but just bigger. I mean, that thing must weigh like a pound. And this is just a, a solid core. You'd have all sorts of different, like, exploding armor penetrating and all sorts of things. Depleted uranium, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Impressive. The reason I have half of this is basically because since I was a kid I've been shooting. Um, I haven't been able to shoot much in the past few years. I haven't shot a shotgun for, God, got to be well over 15 years now. I still do a bit of air rifle shooting, but I just don't think where my family went in two directions, that kind of, that was one side that I wasn't with. So I haven't been able to do it in years. But I still have an interest, especially in the engineering and the history of things. Uh, this is the casing from, now, what is it? It's an M... M something. It's a big ass grenade launcher that goes ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, ka -chunk, and it's got a chain belt feed of these. The, the uh, grenades are only about that long. Big rounded thing. Yeah, got one of those. That's just a 50 BMG casing without a primer in it. That's a magazine from a... I don't actually remember what that comes from. But it's full of 9 mils, and that's actually the reason I wanted to get in here. I need these 9 mils um, for a practice run. I'm going to have to get some more. So I need these. They'll probably do. Uh, this is the magazine from an SA-80 rifle, and it is pretty much full with its complement of um, 5.56 and 2.23, that's it. But it's, uh, yeah, this is actually 2.23. But I might do something with those, it's all depending, I need to work out from the sizes of these what mould sizes I need, so it's really handy that I've actually got this lot. Okay, I'm going to start with the little ones and work my way up a bit so you get a comparison. Um, so that's a 22 long rifle, or 22 LR, and you also get short cased versions which are 22 shorts. I can't actually read that myself at the moment. Um, 25 ACP? Maybe? 7.65? Yeah, somewhere that's a 380 auto. So that's, that's slightly bigger. 7.65 Parabellum. Um, I can't remember what that's used in either. I'm doing this in general size of the round, not like by calibre or anything like that, so don't get me for the order. Um, 9mm Luger. I also have a, which is basically the exact same thing, another 9mm round, but that's actually from 1943, so that's World War II era. And a 9mm that's marked police. I don't know why. Then 40 Smith & Wesson, which is a... same as a 10mm, isn't it, if I remember rightly. 45 Auto, which is like 45 ACP, and then I've got a 4, 45 Auto, which is the exact same thing, I think, but with a different bullet, and for some reason I have it in my mind that that's got something to do with the British. 32 Smith & Wesson, so that's obviously a smaller calibre. 32... Why have I got two of them? Oh, it's because one's a lead cast and one is a full metal jacket. That's why I've got... Uh, yes, because I've got a couple like that. 30 carbine. That's actually not a pistol round. That's from a carbine, but whatever. <laughs> it's just going in whatever order I grab them now. 9mm Winchester Magnum, which is exactly the same as a 9mm, but just longer. Then, oh God, a 38 Special, which is a, sort of the light version of the Magnum, or the Magnum's the heavy version. 357 mag, and that's another 357 mag, but one's a nickel case and one's brass case. Then a 10mm magnum, which is the same as a, oh god, same as a 10mm one, but just longer again. Oh, we've missed one in the middle. 7.63 Mauser, so that's German, somewhere around there. Then there's 44 Magnum, I've got that in copper and lead cast. Then another 44 Magnum, but with a different projectile. Then 45 Long Colt, which is basically the 45 ACP, but longer. Uh, actually, this has got a rim on it, so it's like a 45 long rimmed. That's the difference. Some are rimmed, some aren't rimmed, it depends what it goes in. Mag um, revolver rounds tend to be rimmed. Um, whereas in automatic guns tend to be not rimmed. They have a rim, but it doesn't sit bigger than the casing. It's cut into it. Uh, then you've got a 50 AE, 
Remember that YouTuber who his girlfriend basically killed him because he said shoot me with this book in front of me with a 50 AE and he thought that the one book would stop it. To put this into perspective, that is a 9mm. Hmm. And then a 500 Smith & Wesson, which dwarfs the 50, which dwarfs the 9mm. Wow, this really is going to be a long video and people are going to be like, what the hell is he doing uploading this? It doesn't matter what I upload. If people like it, they like it, and if they don't, they don't. It's not like my subscribers are the only ones seeing my videos these days. 60% of my viewers are not subscribers. Um, turn on notifications so you don't miss videos. Okay, so that's, that's like one lot. Uh, now we're into rifle stuff, but there's a few randoms in between. So we'll start with the smaller stuff again and work our way up. Although, actually I just realised that would technically be a hunger, handgun round, wouldn't it? 4440. Uh, they were used in revolvers and leather guns, I believe. You may notice this does not have a struck primer. It is still okay because it's an oiled primer. Basically you have two options with primers. You either fire them and they end up with a dent. Or you don't and you oil them. When I make castings, I'll make sure I use dented primer inerts, and that way, visibly from the outside, you can see they're inerts. Uh, because otherwise, you wouldn't be able to tell if they were actually live rounds if they were the oiled type. Uh, anyway, uh, so that was that, and there's an A38 Special Plus P. Right, rifle rounds. We need a we need a reference. Let's have the nine mil as the reference. Uh, FM57, which is, actually is a handgun round, but is also used in the thing like the. P P90 use it? I think so. 221 Remington Fireball. Well, I'm not even sure what that was used in. 30 Mauser, but this is a really weird one. I think this is known as the silent bullet. It's got something else in there. I can't remember what exactly what it does, but this is a much f uh, quieter firing cartridge. And if I remember rightly, if I can find one. 762 by 39 which is the AK-47 bullet. Um, it's the... Oh no, it actually is smaller. Huh? I'm confused about that. Well, anyway, there's, there's the AK round. Um, is that another AK round? Yeah, that's a steel cased one. And then there's a 792 by 33 which is just a bit bigger than that, but shorter. So it's like a beefed up AK and then shortened down. 5.56 or 2.23, which is what the AR platforms tend to use. The British SAA to uses a lot of our stuff is. And that is only a 22 caliber. That's the same caliber bullet as the, the small one. It's just going a lot faster. 22 Hornet. Yes, yeah, so we are mixing things up quite a bit here. L42A3. I can't remember exactly what this is, but I'm sure it's what the British machine guns use, the belt-fed ones. I can't remember what calibre that actually is. And then a 458 SOCOM, which is a bullet which was designed to fit in the AR mag. Hang on, should we find out? I'm going to hate myself later for doing this, but I want to know. I'm sure this fits in here. It does. I think they still double stack, but not quite as properly apart. So you only get so many in there, but I was right. It's made to fit. See? You need a different barrel and a different bolt, I think. That's all you need. And then you can use your normal AR. Just found another 9mm, but it looks really short. It's the same size, it's just tiny. 243 lead tip. Oh, that's a um, 7.6254R. The 7.6254R is... Um, 7.62 is obviously the same as the AK-47. It's still 30mm round, but it's rimmed and it's longer. And this was used in the German rifles and German machine guns, if I remember rightly. The problem with using rimmed cartridges in the magazines they had were if you didn't put them in the right order you'd get a thing called rim lock where one rim from one casing caught, gets caught on another casing. Uh, 220 Swift, I believe that is a really fast round because it's a very, in fact yes it is, look it's a 2-2, two -two, it's the same as a 223. So it's the same. 
but it's a bigger casing uh, and wider as well. So it's going really fast. Because if you have a bullet which is very small, uh, you can make it go very, very fast. If you use the same amount of gunpowder with a bigger bullet, it's going to go a lot slower. So if you put lots of gunpowder with a small projectile, you've got a super fast little zipping thing. Uh, hence it being called a swift, because they are... Um, let, me th let me think about this. Like, is it a 223 is about 2,800 feet per second, something like that, I think. But um, that, I can't remember what its feet per second is. Anyone know? Leave a comment. 22250 Remington, that's another beefed up 22, which, which got a VMAX tip, which basically means it's a piece of plastic, but it's got an open... It's almost like a hollow point underneath, but it's not. 7mm BR Remington, it's another weird squat thing. I think these are called bench rifle rounds, because these are what they... When they do super accurate stuff, uh, where they've like got a gun that doesn't even look like a gun, it's like a bit of a mechanical... Almost looks like it belongs like on a lathe, and then you've got the gun there, you've got micro adjustments, and they're trying to like shoot bullets through the same holes. Um, so everything gets locked down. I think that's what those are for. 38, 55, so it must be a 38 calibre, 55 long. Uh, as I said, I've got a lot of randoms in here. 22 Hornet. So is that a Hornet Magnum? I can't remember on those ones. Uh, right, so odd rounds. 4570 government, that is a mainstay of American uh, lever action rifles. In my brain, I think this is like a 455 Snyder or something, but I don't think that is right. That's some random thing that was very rare, I remember when I got it. Uh, 4590, which is like the 4570, but longer. 45 being the calibre, and then the length of the case, 45 versus 90, so it's the same thing, but longer. Um, and then a 557, is that the Snyder? No, that is the Snyder, 557 the Snyder, isn't it? That's that bloody great big round that... Is that what the Martini Henry uses? No? Yes. No. Might be. Similar. 7.7 by 58 Jap, which is a Japanese round of some sort, which I think is similar to a 308, but a bit beefed up. 357 rifle round, I don't know what that's from. I promise I bought all of these a long while ago, I don't remember everything perfectly. Just in case you hadn't fallen asleep yet, don't worry, there is loads more to go. Uh, 240. I wish, I wish I actually knew everything was, but there is, there's so many different things, because uh, when it gets to the military ones, they're quite easy, there's only so many of them. But when it comes to the, uh, sort of the sporting ones, and the round, they kind of random calibres, yeah, I start losing my brain. 284 Winchester Super. Which is another one of these overly powered fast rounds, I believe. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. 303 Brit, which I think is... Is that what's used in the Enfield World War One rifle? I think. 8x57... Target. It's these medium sized rifle rounds just confuse the hell out of me. Uh, 3030 Winchester, that is a 3030, that's a well known one that was used quite a bit. Uh, and this says 935 on it. Now I'm pretty sure this is a French or Spanish round and it's got a name that begins with C. And I can't think what it is, but it's got this weirdly long bullet. I mean, like, really long, because it still continues into here, like, down here somewhere. It's massive. Cab, 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 C is on my mind. And a 338 Le Pur, which is a big-ass sniper round, and some of the longer sniper shots have been taken with this round, not with a 50 BMG. The 50 BMG, should we... No, let's just get through more, we'll get back to that. 444 Marlin, 257 Rob, I don't know, 7mm Remington Magnum, WW Super, this just says FA29, 1938, I believe that is a LaBelle round, LaBelle, I think that's how it's pronounced, okay then we have a 93 by 74 rimmed, which is bloody massive. This would be fired, I believe, out of a sort of, these are hunting rounds, like big game. Like elephanty large, large stuff. 338 Winchester Magnum. Another big one. 
357 Remington Ultra Magnum, which is just bigger again. Uh, and then there is a 400 Nitro Express, bigger again. And 375 H&H &H MA. H&H, &H, what's that stand for? H and H, H and H. I can't remember, but it's uh, somewhere in the middle. Oh, there's one, one more. Three hundred Winchester Magnum Super Speed. What year is that? It doesn't have a year on it. But that's another quite large casing uh, to a what was that? Thirty mil? I think it's thirty. No, hang on, I just read it. Three hundred. It says thirty mil, but really big, I believe. Thirty. Calibre, not mill. Right, um, okay, so it's on some considerably bigger stuff. Uh, so remember I said about the 338 Lepur, that's there. And then you know about 50 BMGs, of course, and everyone knows about the 50 BMG, that it's massive and it's become very popular. It's what's fired out of a Barrett rifle, a, um, they use the machine guns, they use as spotting rounds in, now do they use them as spotting rounds in? RPGs. I'm sure there's something like that. Just notice this casing though. It's actually got a split in it. Which is probably why it was uh, got rid of. 165. Don't know what year. Uh, there's also, you may not know this, there's a short version of the 50 BMG which is a, which just says uh, LC 75, 57. And it's basically a shortened BMG which can't remember, that might be the, the sighting round they use. Um, and just another one of the, Oh no, no, that's bigger, isn't it? Hold on, hold on, that's that's even bigger. Uh, there's a BMG Max round, so you know the normal amateur amateur military would use uh, I believe these would be built called ball rounds, uh, but this is a max round which is you know or I suspect maybe when they do use Barrett's as snipers, they use better stuff than standard BMG. And well, they use armor piercing and sundry and stuff like that, which is what I'll get onto now. Um, these aren't actually what they're showing themselves to be; they're just painted. Uh, so they're just normal 50 BMGs. But if you have a different uh, bullet, you can. I believe this would be armor piercing. Uh, the blue and the black, I think that means armour piercing, and then you have the red which is incendiary, so you'd have armour piercing incendiary. But, everyone thinks is the BMG is the big bullet, you know, these are all 50 BMGs. Um, it's the Russian round. It's bigger in every single way. This is a 188-83, that's all I can tell, it's got stars on the base, focus, Got stars and I think those stars mean it's Russian. Not entirely sure. Um, there's some just random 30 cal projectile. And then a belt of Yeah, L24 P no L2 A2. L2 A2, yeah. This is the same stuff, this is the British Army machine gun, I can't remember what one we used, but this is the same round, and it is the same one that was in there. And I've got a load of that, but these projectiles, I'm almost definite, are fake. But the casings and the uh, belt is real. Jesus Christ. Hang on, not quite done. Shotgun rounds. Um, 12 gauge, and that would be in America we called a 30 odd buck. I don't know what we call it, but it's 9 balls, I believe of 30 caliber lead bullets. Uh, the other option is a slug round which is one ounce of just lead. Just a massive lump of lead that when it's fired out of a shotgun it works more like a rifle. It's particularly accurate compared to using a shotgun um, at range because obviously a shotgun is a scatter thing and it doesn't scatter as much as you think it would but when it does get out there a bit then it really does. Um, so that's used for deer hunting and stuff like that. I don't have a 410 cartridge here, there's a load of things I don't have, but this is just stuff I collected over the years. Um, and now it's going to be handy as a reference thing, because if I choose to, well, when I start making things, if people like the idea of the cast paperweights and stuff with ammunition in them, I will do it.
or at least I've got like a reference library of uh, all the sizes that I'd need to work out what mould sizes I'd need if I got one or ordered some. But there you go, I said I'd get around to making this video one day and I have. I don't think it's going to get demonetized. I don't see any reason why it would. This, this is all legal and all above board. Everything has been bought from reputable dealers. Just to be clear. No, I'm not a gun nut as such. I do believe they're a very unfortunate um, invention. But you can't change history. And if you're into engineering and stuff, the solutions that they came to and all the different variations and to do with physics as well, like, you know, knowing about bullet weight versus power load and sort of velocities and mass transfer and all that sort of stuff. Um, energy transfer through mass and all sort of, it's just interesting to me. I would be surprised if anyone watching this actually has a more diverse collection because I spent a long time just trying to find one of everything. Oh, if you're wondering how much this lot all cost, something that's common, like a 9mm, is going to cost you about 75p a round, um, depending on its condition. I think these are a little bit more expensive, I think it was like a pound each or something, because they're, uh, they might have been coated actually. I think the most I've ever paid for a single round was about... Fifteen pounds, and it was probably that really random rare one. The Nitro Express ones are quite expensive too. Um, no, keep those out. Oh, that was a stripper clip for uh, two, two, three, five, five, six. Stripper clips, clips. Oh, here's something for you English people, because not a lot of people know this, and it gets used a lot in films. This is a magazine. This is a clip. You use a clip to load the magazine. On a rifle, which has a built-in magazine, you use a clip, you put it on the top, it has it all lined up, you put it in the top of the gun, you go, goes in and you throw this away. Or you keep them, depending on what army you're in. You know when someone says something, oh, no, like he emptied the clip into him, I imagine them just taking the bullets off and like feeding them to them, because I don't see in, 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 how else that makes sense. You cannot fire a bullet from a clip. Hang on, hang on. Here's where the problem comes. Machine guns that used solid metal things to hold all the rounds. So they're a bit like a clip, but they're also like a magazine. But they're not a magazine because it's not being stored there. It's kind of, they're more like solid belts. That's, it's, yeah. Oh, I was going to put, no, never mind. No, it's not going to fit, is it? not going to fit now because I haven't put all that 223 back in that magazine. God damn it. Right. Uh, yeah, right. So I'm going to have to sit here and do that now. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I'm pretty sure if you've got to this point in the video, you have found it interesting. Don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in this sort of thing. Well, I say this sort of thing. I'm not going to really be doing any more videos on this. But I will at some point be selling these with these inside. Just imagine in your mind's eye. Shut up. The noisiest neighbours on earth. Bye-bye. This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please check out the links in the description and all the different ways you can help support the channel. Any help is greatly appreciated.